Welcome to Unit 9, Video 3, VSEPR. By the end of this video, you should understand how VSEPR, or VSEPR, can be used to predict molecular shape. You should be able to determine molecular shape given a formula of a molecule, and you should be able to start to visualize that molecule three-dimensionally in your head. Molecular structure is the three-dimensional arrangements of the atoms in a molecule. Up to this point, we've been looking at Lewis structures, which are a two-dimensional representation that don't tell us anything about three-dimensional structure. They simply tell us what's connected to what and where the electrons are. We can use Lewis structures to predict what the three-dimensional structure of a molecule will look like. This is often called the geometric structure, and which specifies the bond angles between the atoms, which is really important. A bond angle is the angle formed between two bonds in a molecule. For instance, if we look at this water molecule here, you see the oxygen, the big circle at the bottom, uh, is connected to two hydrogen atoms, the smaller circles on either end. Notice the red line represents the two bonds be formed between each hydrogen and oxygen. We can measure the angle that these bonds form. In this case, the angle is about 104 degrees. These bond angles become very important as we move forward. The VSEPR model is an, is an acronym that stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Model. As the name suggests, it predicts the structure of molecules based on the assumption that electron pairs are going to want to be as far away from each other as possible in the molecule, since electron pairs will repel each other. In order to reduce electron repulsion, we put the electron pairs as far away as possible. This dictates where the bonds will be in a molecule, and thus the shape of the molecule. Let's start by looking at some basic shapes for uh, most common molecules. Notice each of these molecules contains a central atom, an atom in the middle. In this case, all of these atoms are represented in blue, with the exception of the one at the bottom, which is pink. On the central atom, we can define the number of electron domains. Those are listed in the column to the left. That's the number of bonding or non-bonding pairs on the central atom. Once we know how many bonds the central atom forms and how many unbonding pair, non-bonding pairs are on the central atom, we can predict the electron geometry or the shape of the molecule. In this case, you're looking at basic structures that have no non-bonding pairs on the central atom. Each of these central atoms contains only bonds, no lone pair electrons. As you can see from the chart, central atoms that form two bonds form a linear molecule with a 180 degree bond angle. Likewise, central atoms that form three bonds form a trigonal planar shaped molecule with 120 degrees between each bond angle, and so on and so forth. Take a look at this chart and then we'll start talking about what happens when we put non-bonding pairs on the central atom. Let's take a look at some of these structures three-dimensionally using some molecule visualization software. Here we have a linear molecule. Notice on the central atom we just have bonds coming out at 180 degrees. There's two bonds that form and no non-bonding pairs. A trigonal planar molecule, on the other hand, forms sort of a triangle shape with its bonds and lies in a single flat plane. Notice this is a flat plane molecule, not three-dimensional molecule. A tetrahedral forms four equivalent bonds. It looks sort of like a tripod at the bottom with something sticking out of the top. Notice no matter how we spin this molecule, all of the bonds are at the exact same angle to one another. This will become really important later on. Here's a trigonal bipyramidal molecule. This has five bonding domains and no non-bonding domains. One way to look at it is a 180 degree bond angle between these bonds here with a 120 degree trigonal planar molecule sort of in the middle that's been sort of skewered by this 180 degree set of bonds. Therefore, with this model, molecule, we have a few different bond angles. We have this bond angle here, all of these, these are 90 degree bond angles. 
but when we turn the molecule this way, we get 120 degree bond angles. And finally, an octahedral molecule. An octahedral molecule has a 180 degree bond angle in the middle, and then we have sort of an X going through the sides. Notice that each of these bond angles is 90 degrees. No matter how I turn it, all of the bond angles are the same, much like a tetrahedral molecule. Often, when we draw a Lewis structure, we see that there are some non-bonding domains on the central atom. These would be structures that have dots on the central atom rather than bonds. Non-bonding pairs require more room than bonding pairs. There's more repulsion. This tends to compress the bond angles between the bonding pairs and make them a smaller angle. This results in some new structures. Let's start with structures that have three electron domains. Recall that when we have three electron domains, usually we have a trigonal planar molecule if all three domains form bonds. However, if two of the domains form bonds and one remains non-bonding, we end up with a bent structure. Structures with four electron domains usually start out as tetrahedrals when the, all four bonding domains have formed bonds. However, if we have a structure with three bonding domains and one non-bonding domain, we get a trigonal pyramidal molecule. If we have a structure with two bonding domains and two non-bonding domains, we get a bent structure. Let's pause and look at a couple of these three-dimensionally. Here's an example of a bent structure. Notice it's formed two bonds, but the existence of a non-bonding pair up here has pushed these bonds downwards, causing it to have a bent structure rather than a linear structure. Here we have a trigonal pyramidal structure. Again, we have three bonds, but the non-bonding pair at the top has forced these bonds downward. So instead of lying in a flat plane like a trigonal planar molecule, the bonds form a bit of a pyramid. So this one actually sticks up off the table three-dimensionally. Looking now at structures with five electron domains, recall that five bonds on the central atom gives us a trigonal bipyramidal shape. However, if we have four bonds and a non-bonding pair, we get a shape called sawhorse, or is often called seesaw as well. I prefer seesaw. We'll look at this three-dimensionally to see how it, it looks like a seesaw. If we have three bonding pairs and two non-bonding pairs, we get a T-shaped molecule. And if we have two non-bonding uh, pairs and three non-bonding pairs, we get a linear molecule. Notice in each of these cases, these molecules allow for the electrons to be as far away from each other as possible. Finally, structures with six electron domains. Ordinarily, six bonds would give us an octahedral structure. Remove one bond and make it a non-bonding pair, and you get square pyramidal. Remove two bonds and make them non-bonding pairs, you get square planar. Remove three, you get T-shaped, and four, and you're back to linear. Let's look at these three-dimensionally. Here's our sawhorse, or seesaw structure. Notice the seesaw structure has four bonding domains and one non-bonding domain, pushing these bond angles downwards. Here we have a straight axis with a stand here. It kind of looks like a seesaw. You can imagine a child sitting here and here on the seesaw and seesawing back and forth. Here's a representation of a T-shaped molecule with three bonding domains and two non-bonding domains. This molecule is literally shaped like a T, and it lies in a flat plane. Looking now at a square pyramidal molecule, we see that we have a square that lies in a flat plane on this side, with then something coming out of the top. And finally, we have a square planar molecule. It's a square shape, or an X, that lies in a single flat plane. Here are the steps that will help us determine the molecular shape. We start by drawing the Lewis structure. From the Lewis structure, we can determine the number of bonding domains and the number of non-bonding domains on the central atom. Using this information, we can determine the molecular shape or structure. It's important to note that when we're counting bonding domains, 
Double and triple bonds count as one bonding domain, not two and three respectively. So no matter what kind of bond it's forming, we count it as a single bonding domain. Let's look at some examples. Recall in class you were giving a, given a sheet that organizes all of the bonding and non-bonding domain information along with the structure names. You should have that sheet handy. If you don't have it, you can print it from the Haiku page. Let's start with the CH4 molecule. I want to first draw a Lewis structure for the CH4 molecule. Since carbon has four, electron, four valence electrons and each hydrogen has one, I have eight valence electrons to put in my structure. Now, I draw carbon, my central atom, and I bond it to the four hydrogens that the, the formula tells me it is bonded to. Now I can count bonding and non-bonding domains. Notice that this molecule, the central atom, carbon, has one, two, three, four bonding domains. Also notice that it has zero non-bonding domains since there are no dots or lone pairs on the central atom. If you look at your chart, you'll see that four bonding domains and zero non-bonding domains corresponds to a tetrahedral structure. Let's try another example. This time, let's look at NF3. Recall that nitrogen has five valence electrons, and each fluorine has seven for a total of 26 valence electrons. Let's start by drawing nitrogen, our central atom, and connecting it to three fluorines. I've now used six electrons. I have 20 more, so I'm going to distribute them. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Let's count bonding and non-bonding domains. Notice that nitrogen has formed one, two, three bonds, giving us three bonding domains. Also notice that nitrogen has a non-bonding pair, giving us one non-bonding domain. Notice that we only count the non-bonding domains on the central atom. It doesn't matter that fluorine has non-bonding domains. Looking at your chart, you see that three bonding domains and one non-bonding domain gives us a trigonal pyramidal shape. Let's do one more together. This time, let's do CO2. CO2, carbon has four valence electrons. Each oxygen has six. Six and six is 12, and four is 16 valence electrons. So I'm going to draw my Lewis structure. Carbon in the middle, oxygen, oxygen. I've used four valence electrons. I'm going to put in double bonds here because I know that I'm not going to have enough electrons. So I now have used two, four, six, eight electrons. Carbon has all electrons that it wants. I have eight more. Two, four, six, eight. Now my oxygens have all their valence elect all the electrons they need, so our Lewis structure is legitimate. Now let's count domains. Carbon here, the central atom, has one, two bonding domains. Notice it doesn't matter that they're double bonds. They still count as only two bonding domains. And it has no non-bonding domains. Looking at the chart, we see that two bonding domains and zero non-bonding domains give us, gives us a linear structure. Here's some structures to try on your own. Pause the video here, draw the Lewis structure for each molecule, and try to predict the VSEPR geometry. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Here's a summary sheet giving us all the different combinations of bonding and non-bonding domain, uh, domains along with the molecular shape and some examples. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at how VSEPR can be used to predict molecular shape, assuming that electron pairs want to be as far away from as each other as possible to minimize repulsion we can arrive at a three-dimensional shape. Then we learned how to determine molecular shape given the formula of a molecule by drawing its Lewis structure and counting bonding and non-bonding domains. And finally, 
we started learning how to visualize a molecule three-dimensionally. This will be an important skill going forward.